Welcome to Red V TV, supported by Chapel House Cars for the 2024 season for a Red V TV special. Now, Kev, this is about the rivalry. It can only be one rivalry in rugby league. It's the most important one. And as we always say, the most important one is the one that you are involved in. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's To me, it's the biggest game in rugby league, especially in British club rugby league. Um, and you know what? This special hopefully frames that for people. Um, got some great guests, haven't we? Yeah. Um, and it takes two teams to make a rivalry. It, it can't just be one way. Um, so this show is actually not only for Saints fans, it's for, for Wigan fans also. Uh, just to celebrate the rivalry that we have got between us. Um, we hear so often from the fans, Kev, what it means to us. Um, so we've decided to interview some of the main characters involved, both past and present, to hear what they think of it. Um, so, should we get on to our first? Why not? So... In any great rivalry, it takes two to tango. Um, so we are delighted to welcome to the show a man who scored 168 tries in 213 Wigan appearances, 18 tries in 29 England internationals, Man of Steel on two occasions with two different clubs, nemesis, agent provocateur, but always a fawn in our side. It's Wigan legend, former England captain, turned Sky Sports Rugby League pundit, Sam Tompkins. Good evening. Evening, how are you? Yeah, not bad. I tell you what, I have to look up your stats from Wigan. They're not things I know off the top of my head. <laughs> but it wasn't good reading for you, was it? No, <laughs> not, not not great at all. <laughs> yeah. Sam, before we start talking about this, this derby, this rivalry is a special one, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I think it's... The history behind it, the the battles that the two teams have had, um, and and continued to have, and I think what separates it is both teams have continued to be, you know, ride up there for the majority of of a long period of time. You know, Leeds and Leeds and Bradford's died out for the reason that the the teams aren't level. Um, Hull KR and LFC seems to be going that way this year, um, but. Uh, yeah, I think Saints and Wigan, the, the two teams that are always competing at the end of the season, um, competing for Challenge Cups and, you know, the, the, the games in between are equally as important to fans of both sides. What did the derby mean to you when you were younger? Um, obviously, you've come through um, the ranks at Wigan, through the academy to, to before you made the first team. What are your memories of it? Um, my My first memories of it, um, we're going to to watch Wigan Saints derbies and not being asked about it because I was a Warrington fan. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I moved to Wigan when I was about nine years old, and I was a I was a Warrington season ticket holder at the time. But um, all my mates, you know, they were they were Wigan fans, so I started started going to the games and loved being there. I was a you know I was I was rugby mad at that age, so I was happy to go to any game, but I didn't didn't. You know, I wasn't supporting either side, um, and then uh, I joined the the Wigan scholarship system when I was about twelve, and and then once I was into a system at the club, um, you know, I slowly grew this. I was trying to suppress it for a while. I was still trying to claim I was a wire fan, uh, which was tough going at a school in Wigan. Uh, and then you know, as as I developed, I think it was when I got into the academy, and I was being I was part of these. These games, Wigan Saints, um, and it's hammered into how important it is. You know, that's when I, you know, I, I sort of fully got to grips with what it meant. Um, you know, living in Wigan for a, for a, for a large, large part of my life. Um, you know, I, I fully understand the the magnitude of the, of the games, and you know, it's said as a cliche that you know fans just uh, they're not bothered how many games you win as long as you beat Saints and I've genuinely had that said to me you know fans saying look good Friday you've just got to win it um, so I, I you know playing playing against playing at Knowsley Road for the academy with Wigan uh, I remember we'd, we were curtain razor to a game um, and 
by the end of the game, there was probably you know seven or eight thousand people in there, and it was unbelievable, unbelievable. It was like the you know that that feeling of playing in front of a real crowd almost as a kid, um, and it was yeah, it, it was special. That was my first my first sort of um, taking part in one. That was the first time at Northern Road. Excellent. You you mentioned the fans telling you that you've just got to beat Saints. Um, but did you find it easy to block out like the noise around the build up to the game, or was that something? Was it something that you kind of just had to embrace? Yeah, I think you embrace it. It's it's good in it. It's a long season that we play, um, and you have some weeks where it's it's pretty tough to to be on top form throughout the week. You know, you you might be going playing. They get you know Wakefield away on a Sunday. You go in Monday morning and the place isn't bouncing. You know it's feels like a bit of a slog and you know it's a long week's training or whatever. Um, so I think it's really important throughout a year. You're gonna you're gonna have ups and downs through a year in terms of mood, in terms of training intensity, and when you're playing Saints and you're you're in the Wigan, you're in the Wigan team. Um, you know there's. People are cartwheeling in on the Monday uh, because you know you know the excitement's building and and there's more media around it. There's there's more um, engagement with people in the street. You know people will be stopping lads this week saying you know in St Helens and in Wigan, I'll make sure you win Friday. You know everyone knows about it, so it's good. It gives you that buzz for the full week. Um, and and they always turn out being tough games. It's the week after a Good Friday. I always think you know historically we were playing again on the Monday and. It'd be Monday is just do your best because you've given everything on the Friday. So, so you talk about how the the training ground um changes on on the Monday uh, of a of a derby week, but does anything actually change in terms of preparations for the derby? Um, is there any superstitions around it, either like personally or as a team? Is there anything you do differently? No. No, because once once you get on the field and you've got eighty minutes, you know your job's your job. Um, you have a good game plan, um, and you've got to go out and execute it. So that's the same as every week, really. There's, there's no, um, there's no change. Personally, I wasn't superstitious at all at, at anything. Um, I didn't, you know, eat the same meals or, you know, put. I always put my socks on before my boots. That was about it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, nothing, nothing changed in the training ground. So away from the training ground. Where did you prefer playing the derby? Was it at home, away, or on a big stage like a semi or a final? Uh, I'd have to say a semi or a final. Um, I think I probably enjoyed other. I think a semi and a final are different. Um, and obviously, you like you 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 want to beat St Helens, and there's no better place to do it. This is the when it's you know when you can knock them out of summer, and I'm sure since. Fans and players would feel the same, um, but other than that, I'd probably say knows the road was was where you know I first started playing it. I think with the fans being as close as they were, uh, you know, touching distance, that was that felt like a real old school rather when you played the. You know, now we're playing nice stadiums at the DW or the Totally Wicked. Slightly sanitizes it a little bit, but um, yeah, my first my first few derbies at at um, at knows the road were were interesting when you're picking a ball up from the dead ball line and there's some some fans a, a metre away from you calling you every name under some words. I didn't know what that age. <laughs> That's a perfect segue to the next question because we were going to ask you, do you hear the individual shouts from fans during the game? Are there any that make you laugh or are there occasions where you actually pick out a fan's face in the crowd who is who you can... Here, barricading yet, and then you think, I'm going to shut them up, and then you'll look at them a few times during the game when you when you've done something well. Yeah, it's very often it's just white noise and you can't hear it. Um, it's it's when you when you're really close to the fans and there's a little bit of you know a, a downtime in play. You know whether it's a ball's gone dead and you pick it up, and it's you might look up and you you do hear some, and the majority of the time it's you, you get obviously everyone's calling you a knobhead. Stuff like that. It's not funny, is it? It's just like water for ducks back. But yeah, it's funny. I think the the worst one I've got um, was picking the ball up. I was walking second drop out, and some bloke leaned over the fence and just said, "Oh, you're just a shit Logan Tompkins," and that was <laughs> that was as harsh as it gets. 
so you get you do get funny ones like that. You get uh yeah, you get you get loads and it's funny. There was one at Lee um the Lee Leopards last year. I was playing away and we were waiting for we were waiting for a kickoff and I was going back onto the post. And I don't know why, but I was just looking up into the crowd. I was walking back that way. And there was just this guy and he locked eyes had locked eyes with him. And he was calling me all sorts. And then the crowd went really quiet. Obviously, we had no fans there. We just kicked the goal. So the, 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 the stadium was silent. And he called me everything. So I just went, you what? And I was looking straight at him. And he went, me? I went, yeah. He was about <laughs> six rows back. <laughs> I went, yeah, you. And then like other fans jumped in. But like this guy, to get, to get some chat back, you could see he was just like, what's happening here? <laughs> that was oh, wonderful that um, and we know passions run high with fans obviously and it can be easy to forget that the teams are made up of local lads really um, how do you keep those emotions in check for a, a big game such as the Derby um, I think it's focusing on focusing on your, your job it's very easy to for emotions to, to overspill much more so when we played in the academy uh, we were playing Saints in the academy. You were fighting every time you played, um, and that was just because we were young, you know, sixteen to nineteen year olds, full of testosterone, getting told you've got to go and kill this team, and and it boiled over because we didn't. We, we were kids, um, but when you're in the in the first team, it's it's focusing on your job. It's the same way you win semi finals and finals. It's not it's not some fancy play. It's not being emotionally attached to the game. Um, and, and not focusing on result. I think it's it's about just getting it sounds boring, but getting getting all your basics right and and games go so fast for a player. You know, you you, you play it feels like you kicked off and then you're back in at half time. It, it goes really really quickly. Um I think because Wigan Saints games as well, the the crowd's so involved, the so loud, every call, every high tackle or forward pass, it's it's full on. Um which which sort of stimulates referees and players to to be on edge. I think that's why you see it spill over a lot. Um, I think it's just the, the noise and the atmosphere sometimes that that does that. Um, you know, if you if I imagine if Saints and Wigan were playing behind closed doors, you wouldn't get the fiery encounters that you get. Um, so it's it's it, it's relatively easy to keep your your emotions in check. I think now. Saints fans' abiding memory of you may well be that try celebration um, for Catalans in last season's uh, playoff semi-final. Um, I'll be honest, if that was Jack Wellsby doing that in front of the self-stand at Wigan, I'd be all over it, absolutely loving it, because that's what the sport should be about. Now, we reenacted the one um, you did in the 2012 Good Friday derby in front of the West Stand at Saints. When that celebration comes out the first time, is that pure spare of the moment stuff? Is that stuff you thrive on? Did you thrive on it even more when you play for Catalan and you know that Saints fans still consider you to be a Wiganer and an arch enemy? Yeah, well, the the first time I've only ever done that celebration twice as well. People think it got it started getting or oh, you do that Tompkins trot or there's kids who play, who my kids play rugby with here, and when they score a try, they run backwards and like they're all laughing and joking. I'm like, I've only ever done that twice. And the, the, the first time I did it at Saints, as I put the ball down, my, my leg actually got clipped and I turned around and then just ran with it, literally ran with it backwards. Um, and then the, the week before the semi final last year, uh, somebody sent me a tweet and it was a clip of me running backwards and said I'd love to see you doing that again this week I just like laughed it off because I thought I'm never going to get the chance to do that unless you're clearly winning you know what I mean um, and as it happened it it yeah it, it came off and I managed to do it but that is it's part and parcel of the game isn't it um, it's funny when I get called called a wig and I've not I've not been in Wigan for six years I'm born in Milton Keynes I was a Warrington fan and I live in south of France but yeah I'm a dirty Wiganer so <laughs> Everyone in St. Helens, um, yeah. which I'm, I'm proud to, I, I class myself as an adoptive Wigan as well. I'm, I'm happy to, I'm happy to wear that tag. Um, 
but yeah, it was it was funny when I came to when I came to Catalan and played against Saints. It wasn't the same uh, intense rivalry, and and that's that's one thing that I miss playing for Catalan. We don't get them, you know, when we played Saints for Wigan, you could play Saints, Leeds, and Warrington. They were all massive games with huge atmospheres, but obviously we don't we don't get that unless we're playing in a semi or a final. So that was something I I, I really missed. I didn't think I would to be honest because I thought you know I thought we'd have big atmospheres, but um, no, we uh, it's something I missed when I came to Catalan. But it's 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 what you want as a player. You want to be you want to be doing Jack Wells, be you know kicking balls into crowds or celebrating, and it's like Mikey Lewis. He'll be in the whole derby. I'm sure if he scores, he'll be jumping. Over the barrier or something, and and I and I hate it when it when it gets talked down. Certainly on people like Mikey Lewis or Jack Wells, but you know that's what we want. People want to be entertained, and that's entertaining for me. To be to be fair, before we go back onto Kev's questions, that semi final um, at Catalan at the, at the end of the season was probably one of the most intense atmospheres I've actually ever come across in a rugby league ground, and it was almost a little bit intimidating, um, which is. I think it shocked quite a few Saints fans who went over there because obviously they'd they'd always had the the happy atmosphere. We're glad to have the English fans over, and obviously on that occasion the Catalan fans wanted it. They wanted to get to the final, and it it, it added to the occasion. And then obviously you you write a story at the end. It's not the one we wanted to see, but in reality, it's just. It's, do you know what? You just have to look at it and go. It is what it is. You you I say you couldn't write it, and you did. So, right, Kev, go on. <laughs> I was going to say, we just looked at each other, shrugged and went, of course it is. Of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. Um, right, I think this is the and finally question. Easy one. What's your favourite memory of the derby? Can be, as a kid watching with your mates, can be part that you're playing, can be one that you've not been involved in, just your favourite memory of it. Um, it'd have to be, sorry to say it, 2011 at the DW, Liam Farrell um, scoring the in the last minute to to win the game, um, and it was you know the winning the game in the last minute is brilliant and all that, and we we probably didn't deserve to win that game. Makes it more special when you win and you don't deserve it. If you feel like you've you've robbed it, um, uh, but for Liam Farrell, Liam Farrell is Mister Wigan. Do you know what I mean? And you know, for look at the player he's become since then. You know, he's been the most consistent back rower in the league for a long, long time. Um, and my sort of my fondness for that memory has probably grown over the years because it was Faz. Um, you know, he's he's a friend. Me and Faz were playing, you know, for John Fisher against Cowley in school, and that felt like Wigan Saints. Then we go to the scholarship and the academy, and and to go through, I thought that that was that was probably my my best. Um, yeah, I think that was probably my best memory of of a of a game. It's you know Good Friday, it it meant everything to us. So um, I'd say that I always I also remember a Magic Weekend game. I think it might have been twenty nine uh, two thousand and nine. Uh, Saints were playing in a green kit. Um, but yeah, it sound, it sound, it? It yeah was, the Pilkington active kit. Uh, yeah, Carl yeah. Eastman would played in. Yeah, what year was that then? Twenty ten. Maybe. Was it? Um, Maybe. And I, I just, I just remember that being, being a great game. I remember playing against Sean Long. One of my, the funniest memory I've got playing Sean Long at, at uh, Nosley Road, and I was half back and he was half back, and I, I was in awe of Sean Long. Absolutely loved him as a player. Um, he was, I just thought he was a genius. And we we're walking to a scrum, and I'm still like starstruck. I'm playing against Sean Long. I'm, I'm buzzing and I'm walking to the scrum and uh, he's he's got the ball in one hand and he's walking over and he's got his fist clenched like that and he goes, here lad. And I put my hand out like an idiot and he just dropped a piece of mud in my hand. <laughs> he went, you can keep that and soft my boots. <laughs> uh, tears. <laughs> so I thought, what an idiot. Like, and he gave me this piece of mud off his boot and I was like, oh, nice one. And then... Uh, I remember years later, I've I've done it to a few young kids coming through now. Yeah, there you go. You can have that. It's off my boots, lad. It was, uh, yeah, that was a <laughs> a humbling moment. 
for those of us in normal jobs, we just get sent for a long stand somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> it was the equivalent of getting sent for a bubble for a spirit level. Yeah. <laughs> right, Sam, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I'm glad we've got, well, I'm going to mention it now, we've got through, we're out, the famous Catalan Consolation Suite at Magic Weekend at Newcastle. Which you so kindly decided to retweet <laughs> afterwards. It ended up in Forty Twenty magazine. And any time I write anything now about a consolation try, I get about fifty million tweets going. Don't say that again. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably don't chuck that one out again. Yeah. Do you know what? Ninety nine times out of a hundred, nine hundred and ninety nine times out of a thousand, it's a consolation try. Oh, at that point, I'd have written it. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> You're, and, you're and he, gets the blame for it. he gets the blame for it because he wrote it. I missed two tries. I hit the toilets. Came back and went, what's going on here? <laughs> Unbelievable. Right, Sam. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, enjoy the rest no. of your evening. And we look forward to a, another cracking derby this week. Yeah, looking forward to it. Can't wait. I'll be there. Thanks a lot. Cheers, fellas. Well, that's a start to a Red VTV show that we never thought we'd do, Kev. <laughs> definitely yeah good value though really really good value um, interesting chat with him um, yeah it, uh, and listen you don't think you're going to end up smiling at uh, Sam Tompkins stories but fair play to the fella for coming on and having a chat with us yes now we, we're going to have to do some yin to the yang here just to to put the force back right um, so we'll get on to to Saints captain Johnny Lomax, and then we'll interview um, two legends. You'd probably say of both clubs now, uh, two men who've won world club championships uh, in Matty Pete and Paul Wellens. Kev, I'll grab the camera and you grab the mic. Best day ever. We are joined by St. Helens captain Johnny Lomax. Johnny, thanks for joining us. Um, now, talking about the derby as a whole. You grew up in Billinge, one of the border towns, like myself, who grew up in Haydock. Um, but you played for Oral St James as well. All this as a Saints fan, right on the border, repelling Wigan. Um, what was growing up with the derby like for you? Especially because you were training and playing alongside Wigan fans at the time as well, weren't you? Yeah, no, I think it was obviously something that um, I was brought up on, uh, you know, with the right being from Billinge, um, bottom end Billinge, you kind of had that rivalry instilled into you from very early on. Um, you know, it probably sat right on the border of it, almost means you get both sides of it. So you kind of show into the rivalry very early. Um, you know, it's something as a supporter, you know, you obviously always being a Saint supporter and family being Saint supporters, that it was always huge. It was always occasion that you circle and want to get down to the game and watch it. Um, you know, so then that, being moved towards a player also have people then saying you know that that's the only one that matters and and nothing else matters um obviously it's not that simple um but you know it, it's certainly one that has, has a huge um bragging rights over it and um something that you know playing for an all st james team it was probably i was probably a bit more of the minority in the saints fans um there was a fair few of us but we, we were probably the minority that again you'd be in that stage where you're still a supporter but playing around rugby rugby fans and rugby players and um, you know they'd always come with that bit of rivalry bit of banter and you know bragging rights especially on them games being on a Friday and training uh, amateur on a Saturday it'd always be what you're going to be met with depending on the result of the game um, but yeah it's something that for myself I've the rivalry's always been huge it's something I've been brought up with um, something that you know I um, embraced as a fan and embraced as a player and that's it. Fans and players obviously obviously have different experiences of the derby. Um, does the team prepare for this game like any other game, or is there something unique about the build-up to a derby? I mean, some, in some ways, you know, you try to keep things as normal as possible. That's what you definitely try to do. Obviously, you look at um, teams individually and um, to see their differences and what they do unique, what they like to do, and you try and plan for that. So obviously, in that way, it is slightly different because, but that's a week-to-week -week thing as well. Um, but in the back of the mind, there's always that kind of bit that, you know, it is Wigan, it is a bit different, but I think it is important to, to approach it in the same way, um, not let emotion take over early in the week and be hit with that emotion when you run out for the atmosphere and you're hit with the atmosphere. Um, it's something that, you know, it's something that you certainly do really look forward to 
as a as a player and it's something that does hit differently. I think it's something that even when I was a supporter on the um, terraces, it's something that it hits differently. Go into a, Saint, a Saints Wigan game as a young lad and you're in all the crowd cheering and, and singing. It's something that you get involved with and uh, it's something that you you know, you know, you love as a supporter and certainly as a player, you, you grow hearing that, that support and that chanting is um, something that, you know, you really do look forward to and it is probably the biggest thing that makes this so different. Obviously you've got two great teams, a great rivalry playing each other but at the same time that atmosphere is always incredible and you wish you could bottle it up and just open it every game that you play. Um, sadly it's not it's not the case but you know for this one it's something that is quite, inc is quite incredible to be a part of. Yeah, I, I was going to ask like how important are the fans because obviously we've, we've had a, a Covid hit year where we ended up with a grand final in front of no one. That must have been surreal to play in because, as you say, fans and atmosphere is so important to this game. Yeah, definitely. And I think the one with the fans is obviously you have some of some atmospheres where it can be almost be a bit eerie. So there can be fans in the ground, but it can be quiet. It can be a bit. It's not always positive, and it it can you know that can affect you too. Yeah. Um, but I think you know when the crowd is, they're on and they're singing loud and proud and. It's, it's incredible to be part of, and it certainly does give players such a huge boost. Um, like I, I, it genuinely, it's hard to put it into words yeah. um, because it is different. It makes sometimes makes you know the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. Like it's quite incredible to be hit with that noise, and I think there's always an atmosphere in the Saints Wigan because of the rivalry. And so you touched on the 2020 Grand Final. Bizarrely, in that year, there was no atmosphere for any games and the weirdest thing was because the rest of the squads were involved which probably meant there was what maybe 13 14 players and a few staff members from each team in the stands there was actually an, a huge atmosphere at that game it was quite like as you say surreal but incredible at the same time but coming back then to the fans the following year and having that good friday feel and any saints wigan derby atmosphere it was certainly a different are there any superstitions or nerves ahead of big games like derbies? Um, no, I think there probably used to be. There's no doubt about that. Um, and I think that you know it comes to experience everything else. But for myself, it's just about trying to stay as calm, calm as possible, stay composed, um, and just be ready to go when it's time. I think you know just it used to be that kind of you know be up and firing and, and all the rest of it. But you know what 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 we're learning more and more is you know. Each individual's role is different uh, on the field, so some people need to be sparked by aggression, anger. Some yeah. people need to stay calm, relaxed, composed, and and be ready to go. And sometimes it's about actually striking that balance. Now you've been part of the Saints leadership group for a while now, but how does it feel going into a derby day as captain? And will you personally prepare any differently with that responsibility on your shoulders? Um, I suppose. No, I probably won't um, prepare too differently, to be fair. I'd probably not even really thought about it too much, like you said, about being involved in that leadership capacity for a while now. It's something that, you know, you'd always have, have your say throughout the week and, and be involved in discussions going on. Um, so it's something that I've probably not really thought about. Um, I've no doubt be a really proud moment for my family and something that, you know, I've been, been having Saint supporters all all my life, all their lives, you know, it'd be a proud moment for them. But for myself, you know, I think sometimes if you try and change things too much, it just doesn't doesn't work. You've got to, you know, you've got to be in the right mental capacity, right frame of mind, and that gives you the best opportunity to go and perform. Um, and it's just, as I say, trying to keep things as normal as possible, because then as soon as you walk out, as I say, for the warm up, it is different. It hits you different. The atmosphere is fantastic. It's a huge occasion. And now I'm sure that that bus starts a little bit earlier on the drive in and everything else that goes with it. Um, but yeah, it's for the most part, and you know, I'd say it's the same for most sporting people that they want to keep things as normal as possible, stay in the routines. The one thing that you certainly don't want to do, and something I've learned from being a young, learned from my days of being a young lad, is um, you don't want to play the game too early. It's just wasted energy. Yeah, that's fair enough. It makes a lot of sense. Finally, from us, what's your favourite Derby Day memory? Can be as a fan, can be as a player, whatever you want to choose. What's your favourite? I was just saying this earlier, it's almost quite difficult in some ways because I've been to so many as a fan and then played in so many as a player now that some of them do kind of blend together. Um, 
And weirdly, sometimes the ones that actually stick are the ones where you might not have got the result as a player because, you know, they're the ones that hurt the most. Sometimes, you know, you win, it's short-lived and it's the next job mentality. Um, but one that's, you know, that always does stand up and it's probably because of the way the highlights are as well. But the Good Friday, uh, the famous Paul Sculthorpe and the Farrell incident, is something that always is going to stand out because it was something that was probably really unique. It was a huge occasion, huge game with that unique happening in the game. Um, rightly, wrongly, depends on how we're looking at it, what time, what era and everything else that we're looking at it. But then it's also been shown the highlight reel that it has for years and years that it's something that there's a reason it's had that highlight reel. It's because it was such a huge moment in the game and such a huge memory and that's one that's always going to stand out for me that and also road stood on the terraces as a supporter yeah definitely an iconic one to end on johnny thank you very much for your time cheers thank you we are pleased to be joined by matt pete wigan head coach matt thanks for joining us it's a pleasure yeah uh, good event looking forward to the game and it's nice to meet you both thank you very much now you grew up in uh, a household passionate about Wigan rugby. What I want to know is, what did the derby mean to you when you were younger? Um, was it the first game you looked for in the fixtures? Kind of, kind of. What did it mean? The clamour of it. Uh, when I think back to being really young, watching when you're asking me about, it, I don't think I probably understood the true magnitude of, of Wigan Saints. Uh, the, the fact is, at that time, Wigan were, were quite dominant and. They, they won very often, so as a eight, nine, ten-year-old, you kind of took for granted uh, that success and just concentrated more on on the Wigan game and and the cup finals. Really, being being a junior, uh, and I missed the the Wigan Saints Challenge Cup final. So a lot of the time, I remember the, the lead ones, the witness ones. Uh, so yeah, I, I probably didn't separate the two until I got a bit older, until I started working uh, at Wigan. And that was probably when I realised, you know, meeting people like like Wayne, etc., and, and seeing St. Helens have that period of success at the moment with the likes of uh, Paul Schoolfork, Kieran Cunningham, Sean Long, and probably when St. Helens got that run of success as well, that I, I started to get a sense of the rivalry. So yeah, really young, it was Wigan got all their own way, so I wasn't too fussed. And then seeing St. Helens and the success that they have had and how they've built that, probably that's when. I got a taste of the rivalry and uh, as well as the admiration for the club. So, what is the first derby that you remember then? If you say it's a bit later on, because if I if I'm talking about one, the one that I really remember was in 1997 in the cup, which I'd have been 16 at the time, and that's the one that I first remember the full game of. Um, and that game, the the first derby that you remember, were you nervous? Were you excited? I can remember a five four in one of the, in one of the. Uh, it must be one of the cup competitions. I think Wigan won 5-4, yeah, but I, yeah. I could be wrong. And I remember Jeremy Quack Cracken was playing for uh, St. Helens at the time, and Dean Bell always got his own way in them years. But uh, McCracken put a good shot on Dean Bell, and I always remember that. I think because it was so low scoring. Uh, other than that, you tend to remember the fighting ones as a kid, don't you? So I, I couldn't tell you that the years that it were, uh, but I quite often I'd go to Central Park on Nolsey Road. And, I just remember the fights probably and uh, the, the good tussles between sort of Paul Bishop, Andy Gregory, Alan Hunt, Martin Afire. So it was more that kind of thing. I couldn't remember a particular game other than that, that far four. So as your career's kind of gone on, your, your coaching career's progressed, um, you're about to take charge of a team in the biggest game in Club Rugby League. How does that feel? Yeah, it, seemed, it still seems strange to hear, hear you say it. Uh, but it's, it's my job, isn't it? It's what I do, it's what I've been doing today, it's the group of players that I work with. And uh, yeah, it's fortunate for me, my, my life's gone on this journey where I can be involved with such a, a special club and against a special club as well. So to play my part in, in these occasions is uh, really exciting. It brings great pride to me and to be you know associated, you know, I'm sat there with, with Paul Weller and Johnny Lomax and, uh, yeah, it's, it is sometimes like a pinch myself moment, but as well I've got a job to do and I take it very seriously. So yeah, it's exciting, uh, but I have to concentrate on what role I can play. 
Yeah, talking about like the, the job that you do, your career through rugby was a little bit different, where you went away to uni, did English at Man Met University, I believe, um, and then you, you came back into coaching, you did a bit of amateur level and came through the, the age ranks at, say, at Wigan, sorry, uh, including being head of youth performance. How does the derby compare at them age levels? Is it, is it still as intense? Is it still as, like, you get them ding-dong battles? Yeah, I reckon in some ways it's, it's probably more intense. You, know, you don't have the crowds, but what you do have is both sets of players are generally from the area. So uh, it probably means as much, if not more, to them uh, and, and their families as it would to a, a team playing in front of a full house on, on Friday. So it certainly means as much to the players and their families, and it brings the best out of both both sets of players. And for me, that's the beauty of the rivalry, uh, is it brings the best out of us, it brings the best out of St. Helens, and ultimately it brings the best out of, of the occasion for, for British Rugby League. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of fun around the game, but I think what's great about about these rivalries, where, whether it's under 11s uh, or first team, you know, both, both sets of players want to be at the best. Yeah, definitely. You mentioned the, uh, about like the, the fans and, and everything like that. There's a lot of emotion when it comes to the fans. Is that something that you try and harness? Is it something you try and subdue in your preparations for the week? Um, or is it inescapable, considering what it means to supporters? Yeah, it's certainly inescapable. And you don't want to escape it. That's why you do it. You know, These players have worked very hard to, to get onto this field in front of these people. So I think it's about balance. Everything's about balance. So... You know, you want to be motivated, but you have to be controlled. You want to be calm, but you've got to be motivated. So everything in, in life, really, but certainly in sport and these sorts of games is about striking that balance and same for every individual. You know, the front rowers, uh, the likes of Matty Lees, Morgan Knowles, Cade Ellis, Luke Thompson, they probably have to be a little bit more emotionally charged than, for example, Johnny Lomax or Bevan French. So each individual, including staff, including supporters, have to get the balance right. Yeah, definitely. And finally, for, for this, um, on a personal level, what's your favourite Derby Day memory? Well, personally, uh, it would be the semi-final that we won a few years ago to go to the, to the Challenge Cup. And it's, it's probably 50% that it was a Derby uh, and 50% that it was a game that got... You know, me as head coach to, to take my team to a Challenge Cup final. And uh, at that time, we hadn't beat, beaten St. Helens for a while. You were streets ahead uh, and have been for some years. So to get that win probably against the run of momentum was, was a special day for, for me personally in the club. So, yeah, that I think derbies are always special, but when they're, they have something else attached to them, whether it's a cup final or a semi-final, it probably matter that little bit, even that little bit more. Superb. Matty, thanks very much for your time. Thank you. We are joined by St. Helens head coach Paul Wellings. Paul, thanks for joining us. Um, right, for supporters, Derby Week is the biggest week in Super League. Before we talk about anything else, can you give us an insight into what the Derby meant for you as a youngster and your first memories around it? Oh, just, yeah. I've, you know, I, I lived in the shadows of Nosley Road, grew up on Mulder Day Road, so, you know. St. Helens Rugby League and Rugby League in general was always you know, something that was you know, part of my upbringing. Uh, I just remember as a, as a young player going to games and in particular seeing some Wigan games and you know, quickly realising the importance of the fixture. Uh, you know, Most kids got excited on Christmas Eve and couldn't sleep on Christmas Eve because uh, you know, it was Christmas Day the next day. I was, I was different. I slept well on Christmas Eve. It was Christmas night because Boxing Day was the day after New Saints Wigan. So I was excited for that game. And it's no different now with Good Friday. I know that you know there's a huge buzz around the town whenever, whenever the, uh, you know these games come around. Uh, and you know, ever since I've been a little boy, I've always you know, you know thrived at, and, and and really looked forward to you know, to these fixtures. So, how was that? now kind of changed and developed uh, now your career's taken you through playing and coaching uh, the Derby games, I mean one of the most iconic photos of you is in a Saints shirt at Old Trafford 2014 uh, banishing the demons after a win but as I say how, how have those kind of feelings of what the Derby's meant to you changed? Yeah well I think obviously there's you know, as, as a supporter you go uh, you watch the game, you, there's a real emotional 
you know involvement there you're on the terraces there's a, that little bit of jeopardy around the game where you, you're not really in control you're hoping that your team does well and you're wanting the you know the players to come off and uh, you either go away happy or, or disappointed and uh, I suppose you know having been a player now and, and now obviously a coach uh, there, there is a bit more there's a bit more of an element of control around you know what what goes on on the field you know what team we pick how do we go about playing and you know having that responsibility uh, you know is huge uh, it's something I enjoy and hopefully I can do all the right things and make all the right calls to, to get a positive results on the weekend yeah, you talk about that control. Uh, I'm sure you still get stopped in town and told just beat Wigan. Um, how do you take the energy of the fans into games as a coach? Um, do you have to do anything? Do you try and temper the outside noise, noise, or use it as part of the build-up? Yeah, I think obviously we've got a lot of players uh, within our team. We've come through the junior system. Uh, if they're not some talented lads, they, they, they pretty quickly understand, you know, what the what this rivalry means. So, you know, as a coach, it's not really a, a week where, you know, you talk about having to motivate your players. I don't need to do that this week. Uh, the, the players understand the, the the enormity of the game. They understand the you know the importance and what it means to to the supporters. And I'm sure it's the same for Wigan as well. So, in that respect, it's an easier week uh, coaching. Uh, just making sure that. I suppose you don't play the game too soon. You know, there's a lot of emotion around the week, so it's important that you stay relaxed uh, and you know come you know c come game time, uh, three o'clock Friday, that, that, that you, you're ready to go. Yeah, you, you talk about like being relaxed into it. You were actually named in Saints 17s across competitive games and friendly 65 times, <laughs> um, which is some going. Um, can you tell us what the feeling was like for you personally um, as a young player when you were told you were playing? Were the nerves feelings any different from that first friendly that you played against Wigan compared to your first competitive start and even your last game, which was against Wigan at their place? Yeah. Yeah, I think you know you, it kind of changes down the years. I, I, it, um, I remember you know as a young player being involved. Actually, you, when you're younger, you just kind of get on with it. <laughs> I don't know. You, I suppose sometimes the, the you know the experience can, can can change the way that you think. I, I was I was always just excited to be part of these fixtures. Understand that you know there was a there was an importance behind them. Uh, but as a young player, I used to look around the dressing room. Some of the players that were in the team with me, like the likes of Kieran, Sean Long, Paul Schoolthorn, that gave me confidence knowing that I was lining up. A, a, you know, alongside some of the best players in the world, as, as, certainly as a young player. You know, as time's gone on, you know, uh, you know, I had to take more of a lead there, making sure that you know the team's preparing in the right way, doing the right things, uh, in order to get a result. And I suppose across those 65 derbies that I played in, I've, I've not won them all, I've not lost them all. Yeah, you know, th th there's a bit of a roller coaster of emotions that you, you can go through, but certainly some of the most special memories I've got from my playing career is, is winning these games. And as a young player, obviously. Your brother Kevin played for the club. He played in a couple of Saints Wigan derbies. Did he give you a steer on what to expect? Uh, anything like that? Uh, not so much. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, I've got all my well, all my brothers are big into rugby. Obviously, my dad was involved at the club for a long, long time. But uh, you know, yeah, our Kevin had a couple of years here. Where, you know, played played first team and. Uh, in fact, our Kevin, you know, tells everybody that me and our Paul played 500 games between us. So, <laughs> uh, he's not wrong. <laughs> so uh, he did. He did uh, yeah. So you know, he's very proud of the fact. We're all very proud of the fact that he played for Saints. Yep. It's, it, it's it, you know, whether you do it once or you do it 500 times, it's a great achievement to represent this club. And uh, certainly, I was very aware of him doing that when I was a young, a young lad growing up. Yeah, so rightly so. Rightly so to be proud. And finally. What is your favourite Derby Day memory? Can be anything as a player, as a fan, as a coach. Which one is your favourite? I mean, obviously the obvious one is the grand final uh, in, in 2014. Uh, you know, I think you know the way that game you know it finished. Obviously, I think people could see the the relief on on my face. Uh, you know, having you know what, and what it meant not not just to me but for the team to to get back to Old Trafford and finally win a grand final and particularly win a grand final against Wigan after so many disappointments there so no, that's probably the standout moment but there are so many hits and I, I love playing at home here I remember a game I played in at the back end of my career where I think it was Joe Greenwood who scored a, a, a try late yeah, yeah. on to, to win what was a tight game uh, I remember that well and uh, you know special memories uh, and there's probably many more if I, if, I, if I had a bit more time to think I could probably come up with a few more Excellent. Paul, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you. Great to talk uh, with everyone involved in this rivalry, just to get that little bit of an insight from the other side of the fence, um, whether that be 
on the field or from from the opposition to see what makes people tick when it comes to this rivalry. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Kev, brilliant work as always with the mic. Um, I like hiding behind it occasionally. <laughs> I think it's only because I've written most of them questions, so why not ask them and, uh, and try and deep dive into what people think, eh? Absolutely. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Um, whichever side of the fence you fall upon when you watch the derby, try and enjoy it. Catch you soon.